As always, if you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and attempt to solve the question on your own before listening on. Now, the key to understanding this question turns out to be the following fact. After the switches are closed, the potential difference across the capacitors are the same and the two capacitors are in parallel. It might help to try to visualize what the circuit looks like once the two switches are closed. We can just draw lines to close the switches. And indeed, once we do that, we complete the circuit and we can see that capacitor one and capacitor two are in fact in parallel with one another. And that means that the potential differences across those capacitors will be the same. We can come up with an expression for the total potential difference between points A and B. Now in this expression, it's important to understand that the potential difference between points A and B is equal to the total charge across both capacitors divided by the equivalent capacitance of C1 and C2. Note again that capital Q is the net charge on both of the capacitors. We can find the expression for CEQ by following the rules for parallel capacitors. And those rules dictate that the equivalent capacitance of a parallel arrangement of capacitors is simply the sum of the individual capacitances. Those individual capacitances were given in the question. So we can sum them and see that the equivalent capacitance is equal to 4 microfarads. If we want to put that into standard units, we would have to write 4 times 10 to the minus 6 farads. So we now have an expression for CEQ, the equivalent capacitance. We need an expression for the total charge across both capacitors. We know that before the switch is closed, that the charge on capacitor 1 would be the product of its capacitance times the potential difference before the switch was closed, and that was given to us as 100 volts. So we'll go ahead and calculate the charge on capacitor 1 again before the switch was closed. Notice that we've use the standard value of farads for the capacitance, and when we calculate that we can see that the charge on capacitor 1 is 1 times 10 to the minus 4 coulombs. We will perform a similar calculation to find the charge on capacitor 2. And when we perform that calculation we can see that the total charge on capacitor 2 is 3 times 10 to the minus 4 coulombs. Now, let's recall that we're seeking an expression for the net charge, capital Q. We basically have to combine these two charges. We just have to be a little bit careful because the polarities are opposite on C1 and C2. When we take the net charge, we don't just want to add them. In fact, we have to subtract them because of that opposite polarity. So in other words, the net charge, capital Q, will become Q sub 2 minus Q sub 1. And of course, when we subtract those values, we would get 2 times 10 to the minus 4 coulomb. So that really was a key to solving this question, was to make sure to subtract those charges due to the opposite polarities of the capacitors. Now that we have the total charge as well as the equivalent capacitance, we can plug in to get the new potential difference after the switch is closed. And when we simplify that, we can see that that potential difference between points A and B after the switch is closed is equal to 50 volts. So that is the correct answer to part A. Now that we have that new potential difference between points A and B, we can easily calculate the charge on capacitor 1 as well as capacitor 2. For capacitor 1, we will take the capacitance of 1 times 10 to the minus 6 farads and multiply it by the new potential difference. And we get a charge of 5 times 10 to the minus 5 coulombs. A similar calculation will be performed for capacitor 2. We'll just use the capacitance of capacitor 2 we can see that the charge in capacitor 2 is 1.5 times 10 to the minus 4 coulombs. So that would be the correct answer to parts B and C. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, please click the thumbs up icon and also subscribe to the channel. You are welcome to send in your own question to the email address on the screen, and I'll do my best to post a solution to it on YouTube.